Welcome, my name is Farhad, I'm a junior doctor working in London and today we're going to talk about how I advised for exams, what I did, what I could have done a bit better and what the evidence is behind it. Now I know there's a few videos out there already but this is the key difference, most of them are really boring. <laughs> Some people enjoy pretending that they study for 10 to 15 hours a day in medical school. The reality is most of them aren't doing that and if you are, you're probably doing something wrong. Now, a lot of people like to quote evidence-based medicine for this, but it's really important that you realize that the evidence is pretty shit. Most of the studies are really poorly designed and not very robust. A lot of the studies that we talk about don't really test long-term learning. But if you study a subject like medicine, there are a lot of soft skills that aren't always easy to test, whether that's communication, multitasking, taking lots of information from relevant sources, and then coming up with a clinical picture. These studies don't really look at that. And the strategies that we talk about aren't going to be particularly useful at learning those skills. So it's important that you bear that in mind. That being said, it is quite hard to design a study that takes into consideration some of these variables. But from my experience and anecdotally, I think these strategies do have a place. So here's what I did. In medical school, I experimented a little bit. I started out taking notes and then stopped very quickly. I didn't find it particularly helpful. I'd only write something if the lecturer said, this is gonna come up in the exams, just a signpost to myself that when I'd come back and revise, I had to go over this. But what I ended up doing was settling on two things. The first is I never tried to actively learn anything. What I tended to do was read all the content that I needed to learn and just space it out and do it regularly. I grouped the lectures into sensible topics, so whether that's cardiovascular, neurological, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And my idea was that I wasn't gonna try and learn anything. I was just gonna read over and over and over again. And my focus was only really to just understand the topic. It. If it isn't obvious, this isn't a cramming technique. This is something you do well in advance of exams, so you start early. I'd make a schedule of the various topics I intended to go through the week. Then the idea was that I'd try and go through each category three times a week. But I wouldn't just read the lectures though. I found that lectures were very good for breadth, but not necessarily for depth. So I'd end up going through relevant textbooks too. And if there was any new information that I'd find, I'd try and summarize that onto the lecture slide so that when I was kind of revising close to exams, I'd have everything in one place. The idea was to be as economical with my words as possible. Turns out this shit has a name. It's called spaced repetition. By not even trying to memorize and giving myself enough time and just repeating repeating the content over and over again, I found that towards the end of the year, I actually knew quite a lot of the content. As you got closer to exams, I'd do a lot of past paper questions. In medicine, a lot of these are multiple choice or MCQs, and I'd go through them over and over again. One of the problems of doing this, you become over familiarized with the questions. So just with the first couple of words in the question, you already knew what the answer was without finishing the rest. So the way I got around that was to read the answers and then try and work backwards. The idea was to see what key features would be in the question to push one answer over the other. And this kind of like backwards quizzing is essentially a type of active recall. To be honest, I didn't do enough of this in med school. This is the mistake I made and it's because I wanted to have some baseline knowledge before I started testing myself. And I think this is a big mistake. In reality, I should have started much sooner. It doesn't matter if you get things wrong because that's actually how you learn quicker. And the evidence backs this, probably because it's quite hard. You don't need to spend hours and hours trying to make those mind games. In this review paper, they said that there was a lot of efficacy within this method across a broad range of material, different ages, different type of content they had to learn. A similar study that they did with year medical students and they kind of found the same thing too. Now a study by this guy also split students up into two groups. And the first group was given questions and answers, whereas the second group was given the questions with only some help to get to the answers. In other words, they weren't spoon fed. Now the second group performed better than the first group and to try and understand this, they did what's called a functional MRI where different parts of your brain light up. And essentially the second group had higher levels of brain activity. Another study in 2010 also split students up into two groups. One would have to take a practice test immediately after and the other group could restudy the material however they wanted. And then they both took a test one week later. They were tested on both facts and concepts. Now the ones who had tested themselves and had to use active recall performed better. Lastly, let's talk through this study in 2011. They split the students up into four different groups where they had to learn some material and at the end of the week they'd receive a test. First group only had one study session to learn everything. The second had four consecutive sessions to learn the content. The third had a study session and then had to create a mind map. The last group would recall what they had learned immediately after the study session. After that, they would then check and then reread and then re-recall again. One week later, they had to take a short test where they had to answer verbatim questions and these are the results. They then asked the students inference questions. So the idea was to test a bit more understanding, not just repeat facts. These results were pretty similar too. 
but before they actually did any of the tests, they asked the students which group they felt would perform the best and what the results of that would be. And here they are. Interestingly, the majority of students thought that active recall would be the worst way of learning, but that's the one that performed best. As I said, these studies are massively flawed and take everything with a pinch of salt. I think these strategies are useful if you are good at them. But if you study a subject that requires a little bit more than just rote learning, bear in mind where some of these shortcomings are in these studies. I've heard there's a good book out there where you can read a bit more about these strategies called Make It Stick. I've not read it because it looks boring. I'm not a fan of these self-improvement books, so I've not read it. But if you read it and it's sh don't blame me. And there we go. I hope that was useful. See you next time.